Welcome to Cast Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be doing practice problem 14.2. Now, in this question, we're given the circuit in the time domain I, I, Q, and we are asked to find the transfer function, and the transfer function should be of the form, this is an inductor of two Henry's, Q Henry's, and this is six ohm, so that's a resistor, and this is a resistor as well. So us to find the transfer function in the frequency domain, VO divided by II. Now if you analyze this circuit, your II is indicated like that and so it is the total current which is fed into the rest of the circuit so to find that total current we can view this as the following we can now put a block and this block will be the equivalent impedance zt in the frequency domain and now saying that Zt is a combination of all of this. And to find that ii, you just say ii using Ohm's law is equals to your VO divided by Zt, which is the total impedance. And from this, we can see that we want to find this. So how can we change this to that? So to do that, we just have to multiply both sides by Zt. and then divide each side by ii so then we have something like this so then we can see that this transfer function can be found by just finding the total impedance so that is exactly what we're going to do to find our transfer function we're just going to find the equivalent impedance and that'll be our transfer function now if you have a transfer function the numerator provides your zeros and the denominator provides your power right so each of these respond or each of these behaves differently when you draw your phase and magnitude plots and we'll get to that when we start talking about both both plots but for now let's just find the transfer function as the question asked so just keep in mind that the transfer function so let me just take it up here so we have it just take in mind that you can find the transfer function from that, from this. So let's go ahead and find that Zt, we just use that notation, we don't have to necessarily use T, I just said Zt as, and T stands for total, right? That is just how I did it. Now each of these, or everything in here is in the time domain. Now I have to convert everything into the frequency domain and a good thing to do, or the best way to start, would be to convert all our values into impedances. So 6 ohm stays as 6 ohm, and 10 ohm stays as 10 ohm. Then your capacitance, converting that, you're going to have this. Then your inductance, this is what we're going to have. Now that we have all of this, let's go ahead and find our Zt. So Zt, if you check, is just this branch in parallel with that branch. So they share two nodes, one at the top and one at the bottom, and therefore they're in parallel. So we just have to find the parallel combination of each. So we can just collapse first, and just make the branches into single impedances. And this first impedance over here would be the sum of these two in series. And the second one here would be the sum of these two in series as well. So now we can say we can take 10 plus, so 10 plus this impedance of the capacitor would be this one. Right. And then for this one, we're going to have 6 plus the impedance of the inductor, which is something like that. 
Now, as you can see, we just have these two in parallel to find our z t. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So z t will be the parallel combination of these two. So let's call this z1, let's call this z2. So z t will be z1 in parallel with z2. And just so we simplify our analysis, let s equals j omega. So wherever we see j omega, we could just put um, s. So to do that, we're going to start doing the computation for zt, and that would give us 10 plus 1 divided by 0 0.1. We don't have to leave the 0 0.1 there. 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1 is 10, and we can define that by s, which is what we're doing over there. Then this is going to be multiplied. We're now computing the parallel combination. This is going to be multiplied by the other one, which is 6 plus 2s. Then at the bottom, we're going to add, this is how you compute the parallel combination of two impedances. At the bottom, you just add them up. So that's what we're going to have. Then coming down here, we're just going to multiply through and work this out. So you're going to have 60 at the top plus 20s plus 60 over s plus 20 divided by let's try to see what we can add from just looking we can add 10 and 6 so 10 and 6 will be 16 plus 10 over s plus 2s now let's multiply the top and the bottom by s this is just my way of doing it you can do it in your own way so doing that okay before we do that you notice let's just simplify this some more up here we have 60 and 20 that can be taken as 80 to so just to simplify the top. Multiplying the top and the bottom by s, we will have 80s, then plus 20s squared plus 60. At the bottom, we have 16s plus 10 plus 2s squared. Now we just have to simplify this because this is our transfer function. We said that zt would be equal to the ratio of vo divided by i. So we now have a transfer function. We now have to simplify it because after finding the transfer function, the question asked for the zeros and the poles. So now I have to extract the zeros and the poles. And as I said, the zeros come from the numerator and the poles come from the denominator. So those are the factors or those are the roots of our expressions at the top and at the bottom. So now we just have to simplify our expressions here to see how they can take us to what we're looking for. So the largest um, common denominator at the top would be 20, right? Taking 20 out, we have s squared plus 4s plus 3. Then at the bottom, the largest one would be Two. Taking 2 out, we have s squared plus 8s plus 5. Now you can cancel that, cancel that, we now have 10 at the top. So we now have an expression like this, and from algebra, or oh, we can factorize this. Right? And factorizing that, you will see that we actually get s plus 1, s plus 3. That was the expression that we get, or that is the expression that we expect. At the bottom, you can't work that from your head. Uh, if you can, that would be cool. So to find the root or to find the poles and the zeros, we just have to equate each of the equations to zero. So the top equated to zero, the bottom equated to zero. And we're basically interested in finding the root of the top expression to find the zeros and the root of the bottom expression to find the poles. Now for the top expression, it's quite easy. If you equate that to zero, you're gonna have your s equals two, negative one, and you're gonna have your s equals two, negative three. And those would be your zeros, right? So you can say s1, s2, just so they're different. And we can just also, I think it's best to say z, just so we know that we're talking about the zeros. So z1, z2, and don't confuse this with impedance. You can just say z1, z2, and these are our zeros. And at the bottom, I guess you have to use this formula. 
negative b plus or minus square root of b squared subtract 4ac divided by 2a. And the b in this case would be 8, a would be 1, and c is 5. Now putting this, this expression into your calculator, to find the two roots, or to find the two poles in our case, we then find that one of the poles is given as, so P1, from this expression, one of the poles will be negative 0 0.683, and another one would be, let's check, negative 7.317. So these would be your two zeros, and these would be your two poles. That is exactly how you solve this question. You just have to find an expression for your transfer function and then work around your given information to find the formula. Now, our formula in this case was in this form. We just simplified it just so we could extract the zeros and the poles. So that is all for me in this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you like the video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you